Today on WS Church Extra, we get an insight into the controversial issue of school safety and how it's affected our school. Also, we check out local Greek fest that's become quite popular here in Palm Beach County. Plus, we weigh in on CrossFitters and their passion for working out. WS Church Extra starts, starts now. now. Welcome to this episode of WS Ridge Extra. I'm Riley Sullivan. And I'm Bryce Perrant. We are here at Summer Ridge High School where vaping has become a heavy issue. Within most Palm Beach County schools, vaping has become a huge epidemic. WS Ridge Extra reporter Anna Thrash has more on how schools are taking action. From jewels to e-cigarettes to dab pins, there comes a question of whether or not kids know what they're putting into their bodies. During the past year, the growth of vapes in school has increased 78%. This has led to the addition of substances like methamphetamine into the vapes in order to produce them for cheaper. Uh, it's a variety. Um, every day seems to be a, a new surprise for us. Um, you know, a lot of students may think I'm just doing a regular vape with just nicotine. Uh, some of them think they are doing some vape with THC oil, but we have found that it is mixed with anything from pesticides. Uh, the latest thing was methamphetamine. You don't know what's in something until you get it. And to sell them, well, if they're mixing it, the way to make more money is to cut it or put other, th other chemicals in there that aren't, that aren't necessary. I wish kids would know how bad it is on their body, their minds, you know. It affects everything. Many suspect this increase has started due to the lack of smell and visibility that these vapes have. In the old days, if, if a student was smoking a cigarette, it was definitely easy to smell, to find it, a um, little bit much easier to get caught. So now without the real odor and the ease of access, um, I think that's increased it a great deal. Mostly because it's um, convenient for them. They can, it can be easily hid and not as detected as other forms of substances. It's you know, so easy to bring to school now. The devices are very small. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to, you know, bring to school, get in the, you know, put in their backpack and all that. Although students don't think it's a big deal, in reality, vaping is a major problem in schools in the United States. You also don't know how it might interact with any medications that you might be on as well, but it's, it's definitely become a, a serious medical concern. In the past year, we've sent about 10 students to the hospital because of their blood pressure and heart rate being so elevated. And again, the concern is you just don't know what it's doing to you yet. It's not just water vapor. It's not just some oil. There are things mixed in. Some of them throw up, blood pressure is elevated. Um, some of them can't even speak. The science is not behind the effects of smoking a vape as they are generally new, but both students and administrators agree that the effects of these vapes will be seen in the future. My concern is that there aren't any long-range studies done yet. We don't know the long-range effects. If you look back long enough in history, you can find advertisements that said smoking cigarettes was healthy. My fear is that, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now, we will start to see the long-term effects, and it's something that you've, it's going to be damage that students have already caused to themselves. It's becoming a legal consequence, um, and you don't really want that at such a young age. Um, and also because it's kind of so new, they don't really know the long-term health effects of this. So that's the scary part is you don't know what you're doing. And so if we're already having issues with kids having health problems because of it, you don't know what else can happen. You know, anything besides oxygen going into your lungs isn't, isn't good, but I don't think it's going to kill anybody and make anybody drop dead today. I just think that, you know, it's kind of like smoking cigarettes. Eventually you'll have to pay the price for it. Until more long-term research is done, the consequences of vaping will continue to affect the lives of many. For WSRH Extra, I'm Anna Thrash. With the one-year anniversary of the tragedy at Stoneman Douglas passing this February, school safety has become an important issue amongst teens and politicians who call for reform. WSRH Extra reporter Shelby Garamon comments on the effects of the tragedy. 
In the months after the tragic events that took place at Margie Storm and Douglas, Florida legislators in the school district of Palm Beach County both adopted new measures to ensure safe schools for students. We as a publication think that these measures are adequate enough to prevent another catastrophe on a school campus. Measures that were adopted by Palm Beach County schools include the hiring of more school resource officers and the locking of gates and entrances around campus. On the legislative side, the Florida legislator and the governor's office enacted the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School Safety Act. This act allows the Florida Department of Education to allow funding for school safety measures as well as requiring some of the previously stated measures. Comparing the allocation from the 2017 to 2018 year to the 2018 to the 2019 school year, there is a $97 million increase of allowed funds throughout Florida schools. An initiative that the Palm Beach County School District has taken was the introduction of an app called PBC Student Protect. Through this app, users can now quickly alert law enforcement of an emergency as well as send their GPS location. This allows students to immediately notify police so they can deal with the threat as soon as possible. Changes have also occurred to after school sporting events, although this is a more direct response to the shooting that occurred at a Palm Beach Central football game last September. New measures include a clear bag policy, the searching of bags before entry, and forbidding re-entry. These measures, while effective for providing safety, should have been implemented before a school shooting occurred, not after. With all these new measures, schools have enough resources and security to make every student feel safe. For WSRH Extra, I'm Shelby Garamond. This past weekend, a Greek festival was held to celebrate the culture with different Greek food, music, and entertainment. WSRH Extra reporter Megan Froelich has more on the story. <laughs> For the past 44 years, St. Catherine's Greek Orthodox Church has hosted a family-friendly event for all of West Palm to spread their Greek heritage. So the Greek Festival, this is our 44th year here at St. Catherine's. It's when we open up our doors to the uh, West Palm Beach community and we share our culture, uh, our Greek Orthodox faith and our Greek culture. From baked goods to cultural dancing, visitors say that the Greek Fest has something to offer for everyone. I just love looking at all the different um, vendors and I wind up buying something always. A lot of the dances have, depending on the suite, have stories behind them. So in the more solemn ones, those were more during wartime, so we try not to smile as much and we're more stomping and it's more aggressive, so I'd say that's a good portrayal. Many attendees say that their Greek heritage is something important to them and that they take it everywhere they go. The Greek heritage to me is just being a part of your culture, you know, being a part of the community and something bigger than just you. <laughs> when it came down to it, there was one popular reason why attendees came. Uh, for the food. <laughs> so it's a pretty unique experience to, to have the food. My favorite part about being Greek? Oh, the food. <laughs> According to popular opinion, the food is definitely the best part of the Greek fest, and I think I have to agree. For WSRH Extra, I'm Megan Froelich. CrossFit is a high-intensity workout program that is not only a form of exercise, but rather a way of life. WSRH Extra photojournalists Grace Trobridge and Rachel Clark show us how some parents hope to influence their children through their Sunday Family CrossFit event. Family Day is on Sundays, so basically it's where we allow our members to bring their entire family uh, to come out and enjoy a workout together. That way that they have the benefit of bonding time with their kids um, and spending quality time with their family that they may not otherwise get to do. Exercise is so important. It's healthy, it just makes you feel better, look better, and just stay healthy. I like to work out with her and I like to get stronger. Uh, it was actually only a few weeks ago. Uh, the owner, Adam, it was a rainy day. Um, there wasn't a lot of people that showed up. Adam came with his two daughters and decided to do the workout. And while we were doing the workout, he realized how much fun he had had getting trained with his daughters. He was like, we should make this a thing. Because these are the time where they're the most easily influenced and it's also the time where they can put the most uh, impactful decisions in place which allow them to continue healthy habits for the rest of their life. At this point you've probably seen the Seminole Ridge Lift Up, a 15 minute production composed of four different schools with the theme, I want to be a hawk. But how much work goes in behind the scenes? WR Search Extra reporter Samantha Fitzgerald takes us through the process. 
Seminole Ridge hosts an annual lip dub in which all students and staff come together to participate and behind the scenes is a little crazy. Okay, so the day of the lip dub, um, yeah, it gets a little crazy, but actually this year I felt like it was a little less crazy because we've done it a few times and the students know kind of how it all goes and everything. So yeah, it, it is a lot of organizing. You gotta make sure everybody's in their spot. Sometimes you have to like, we had to go back and redo something because people weren't where they were supposed to be. Everyone waited in position for Mr. Wright to come around and record their parts. He went around three times just in case. Lib Dub was crazy. You know, we had to assemble the song list. We had to assemble who was mar who was walking then, who was who was doing whatever. We had to we, we had to really plan out the Lib Dub. You know, people people look at it outside of Lib Dub and say, "Oh, this Lib Dub was trash. Oh, this Lib Dub they didn't even try for this." But y'all didn't realize. You know, we we spent this. It really takes a long time to assemble everything that we need. You know, get the kids hyped. We had to memorize our lines. We had to make sure we were on point with the music. We had to make sure it was live and yeah. With all the hard work and practice done by every student, the lip dub was successful and there was so much school spirit. For WSRH News, I'm Sadie Crooks. Coming up on WSRH Extra, we learn how to bake a simple sweet treat. Plus, what's going on in the world of sports. As the school year goes by, new sports are making their way into the spotlight, especially for some Ridge's competition tier team as they reach states. Also, contradiction has arose on whether or not athletes should be held to the same standards with academics as other students when applying to college. For those stories and more, we go to WSRH Extra Sports anchor Shane Goolsby. Hey, hey Shane! Shane. Thanks guys. Earlier this month, our very own competition cheer team went to states at the University of Florida in Gainesville, and they came back with something they had been working all season for. WSRH sports reporter Lauren Plancarte has more on their journey to states. The Hawks competition cheer team has competed for the top spot in the state, coming closer and closer to taking home gold each year. We've been chasing this for eight years. Uh, we've been th uh, runner-up for three years, and uh, we took third place three years. So we're just so excited to finally achieve what we've been fighting for. Like every sports team, bonding with new teammates can be hard. But for the cheer team, becoming closer was a key factor to winning. It took them a little bit to, to get together. Uh, it wasn't until our winter break in December where they really just finally started bonding and getting closer. Our team is really close and we all hang out all the time. We have team sleepovers constantly. We're always talking to each other. Peter Senio Giannis, captain and the only male on the two team, believed that even though they had a couple bumps in the road along the way, he still had high hopes. Well, we were doubtful because we had a couple uh, mistakes, but I was confident with how we performed and it was a good performance. For her first season here at the Ridge, Greenlee Ruiz says winning states was something she hadn't expected to happen. Personally, as a freshman, I haven't won an, er, 
anything at all, really, nothing big like states. So becoming a freshman and then walking on to this is pretty cool. Eight years of blood, sweat, and tears, the competition cheer team was finally able to accomplish their goal of being state champs. Congratulations, Hawks. For WSH Extra, I'm Laura Placarte. Having a successful season last year, the boys volleyball team is hoping to serve up some serious competition. WSH sports reporter Alex Kiger shows us how the team is preparing. It's the start of a new season for the boys volleyball team and they're seeing a lot of new players. Last year, the Summer Ridge boys volleyball team took home a district title and this year, they look to defend it. Right now, we're just getting more like settled and into it, but later on, it's gonna kick up an in intensity because we're defending the district title. After six years of coaching, Coach Nortonis is looking forward to the season, even after the loss of seniors from last year. We lost about six seniors, so it's gonna be an interesting turnaround, but I'm really excited because we have a lot of young, energized spirit coming up that's gonna bring some good volleyball talent. The Hawks are determined to keep the district title as well as setting their sights further. Last year, we lost in regionals, so this year, we're looking to just continue it. Junior Jackson Brandt is new to the team this year and is looking forward to more than just playing volleyball. Volleyball. I'm looking forward to having a lot of fun out here with my friends playing volleyball. The boys played a tough first game of the season against Park Vista, but are ready to get back to work. We wish them the best of luck through the rest of the season. For WSRH Extra, I'm Alex Kiger. Synchronized swimming is a sport that does not get very much attention. However, it is gaining popularity at Palm Beach Gardens Recreational Center. WSRH sports reporter Kelsey Marugo shows us the art of synchronized swimming. There are many sports across the world that have yet to be acknowledged that many people have found enjoyment in. Well, I saw it on TV once and I was like, Mom, that's pretty cool. And then the place where I used to swim, just speed swimming, they offered some. You know, I like competing, um, you know, practicing every day gets hard. Palm Beach Gardens Recreational Center participates with kids starting from six years old to young adults, allowing them to practice synchronized swimming. I want you to know that it is a sport and it's a very difficult sport. Maybe one of the most. It actually is a sport. It's not flower caps and side dives. It actually is a sport and it's really hard. To stay on track, swimmers use sound waves to help them keep pace. Everyone involved in this strenuous sport has to overcome difficult challenges they are faced with to compete. The hardest part about synchronized swimming is just trying not to give up because you get so tired and you just don't want to keep going. But you have to know it's a team sport, so you can't let your own team down just because you're feeling the down. Um, the hardest part is probably our breath control. We have to stay underwater for long periods of time. Like at sometimes it can be like uh, up to a minute. So you have to have really good breath control and be able to hold your breath underwater for a long period of time. Everyone will be holding their breath to win their competition this weekend and get through practice. For WSRH Extra, I'm Kelsey Marugo. In the sports world, politics has become a prominent issue as bad calls are made and new rules are implemented. The controversial issue of wrong calls made by referees is something that has sports fans heated. WSRH's extra reporter, Jeremy Womack, comments on the circumstance. In the NFL right now as to whether or not every play should be reviewed. As most know, during the Rams vs. Saints games a couple weeks ago, fans are saying the Saints got cheated out of the Super Bowl due to a bad call that was not a subject for review. Normally, only scoring plays are reviewed, which for some fans is very frustrating when the wrong call is made and the refs choose not to look it over or the play can't be reviewed due to bad footage. Our staff here at the Ridge believes that every play should be up for review. The NFL hires people who are designed to be a standby referee point of the view in New York. So why aren't they allowed to intervene to tell the refs they made a wrong call? The NFL has designated people to watch each and every play, but they also record and stream every game from the preseason to the Super Bowl with multiple camera angles. With this being stated, there is no reason to not be able to review every play if needed. For WSH Extra, I'm Kevin McCarthy. It's hard enough to try out for a varsity sport, but it's even harder when you've never played it. Caitlin O'Neill redirected her athletic skills from a different sport based off one homecoming activity. Debra Story sports reporter Aliana Augusto has more on Caitlin's story. With the upcoming flag football season around the corner, childs are in full swing with many girls going head-to-head -head for a position on the varsity flag football team. Attitude, determination, and just the way she works in practice every day really impressed all the coaches and uh, she's exactly the type of player we want on our Seminole Ridge Hawk team. Caitlin O'Neill is known for her great punting abilities on the soccer field. Now she's making the transition to flag football field as she jumped to varsity in her first year playing. All three years I've been here I've um, played powder puff football and I realized that um, it's a really feel like flag football is a big part of the Acres community and um, I've been around it my whole life and I thought it'd be fun to try out. 
I think it's a great that she made varsity because, again, it's really hard to make varsity flag football. And she shows a lot of hard work, so I think she'll be good this year. Caitlin has put hard work and dedication in every single sport she plays. Now it's a flag football while she hopes to have a good varsity season. For WSRH Extra, I'm Aliana Augusto. We wish the best of luck to Caitlin and the rest of the varsity flag football team as they kick off their new season. Well, that's it for WSRH Sports. I'm Shane Goolsby. Thanks, Shane. Well, that's it for this episode of WSRH Extra. If you have any story ideas, please tweet us at Seminole Ridge TV. I'm Riley Sullivan. And I'm Bryce Brandt. Tune into the next show at March 8th at 2.30 p.m.